members of Bethel United Methodist Church. This is Pastor Roy. Coming at you at, uh, well, I'm in one of the sanctuaries, but um, there's nobody here but me and God. And we've been praying for a while, and we've been talking for a while, and we've just decided that we're going to hunker down and we're going to do what needs to be done. And I pray that you are as well. A few announcements this morning. Uh, one is that just stay put, uh, stay at home, stay safe at home. You are not trapped at home, you are safe at home. Uh, please stay that way. Two is, is as you're trying to find things to do, uh, uh, remember that as you're cleaning up and cleaning out and straightening this and straightening that, that we do have a rummage sale coming up later in, in the year. And so uh, you can tag and bag and, and box uh, all the stuff that is for the rummage sale and uh, hold on to it. And if you need help bringing it in, give me a call. And uh, once the ban is lifted of travel, then I will come and help you out by um, picking it up for you in my truck or, or something that we can arrange a way for you to get it here. Two is, is, and this is not just send us your money, send us your money type thing, but uh, you know, the bills keep going on here at the church. And if you uh, feel it in your heart to send in your tithe, our post office box is 791. Um, we would love to, to hear from you as far as that goes, but also check us out on Facebook, check us out on the new website. Uh, all the things that go along with um, this pandemic that we're in, we just continue to be the church. We're not inside this sanctuary. We're not inside these walls. But nonetheless, we are the church. As many posts have said, the church has not been closed. It's been deployed. So be the church wherever you are. Check on your neighbors. Call them. Write them. Holler at them across the yard if you need to. But make sure that everybody's doing okay in all of the stuff that's going on. Those are the announcements today, so let's continue on with worship. As we come to this time of prayer, we look around the sanctuary, and we see empty pews. Picture who sits where. Pray for those that sit around you. Be with those in spirit as we've gathered. As we continue our worship service today, I am uh, we're going to go back to our sermon series that we've been doing all of Lent, and it's giving it up. And today we're going to be talking about giving up popularity. Now, some of us haven't had that problem. We haven't been real popular our entire lives. We've just kind of done our thing and been our own person. But as I sit here in my dining room and, and ponder the popular people of the world, I've also been brought to um, the musical Wicked, which is the part two, or actually the precursor to Wizard of Oz, and in one of the songs it talks about popularity, and you know how all the popular people get all these perks and benefits and all the stuff that goes along with it. So being popular must have its benefits. Um, I don't know if I will ever know about being that popular, but uh, some of you may be, and some of you uh, have experienced the privileges that come along with that. Well, today we're going to be talking about two different scriptures. The first one is Exodus 1. It's uh, verses 1 through 12, 
And let me read that to you here. These are the names of the sons of Israel who went to Egypt with Jacob, each with his family, Reuben, Simon, Levi, and Judah, Iskar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan and Nephalti, Gad and Asher. The descendants of Jacob numbered 70 in all. Joseph was already in Egypt. Now Joseph and all his brothers and all that generation died, but the Israelites were exceedingly fruitful and multiplied greatly increased in numbers, and became so numerous that the land was filled with them. Then a new king, to whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous, and if war breaks out, will join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. And they built Pithom and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. So as we come back from reading about the Israelites, we remember the story of Joseph. And Joseph was popular in Egypt because he interpreted Pharaoh's dreams. But again, as this passage in Exodus points out, once the popularity had left and people had forgotten what Joseph had done for them, they were a problem. They were a people that were going to have to be an issue. And, and the Pharisees, or, and Pharaoh, not Pharisees, Pharaoh decided that they should be put to slave labor and captured and dealt with that way. So when he was popular... Joseph was second in command, second only to Pharaoh himself. When he lost his popularity, they became slaves. You know, when something new happens, it seems that our popularity points, they start over at zero. You know, J Jesus, when he came into Jerusalem, the people were, well, you know, cutting off tree branches. Now, obviously, we don't live in a place where there's palms. And so I couldn't cut off a palm branch and bring it in. This one's out of our backyard. And, um, you know, it would be as well received as the palm branches were then. Whatever it took to show that Jesus was a king. People honored Jesus. And they hailed him as king. The crowds loved Jesus on Palm Sunday. But, you know, just a few days later... A crowd was calling for his death and release of a murderer. Popularity and acclaim in the eyes of others is fleeting at best. And if we put our faith in it, we'll be very disappointed. So let's hear about this story of Jesus coming into Jerusalem. It's Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what is spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed. They brought the donkey and the colt, and place their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So what happens to our popularity? What happens when it's no longer popular to go to church? Well, that has happened in this country. Christendom, which Christendom is basically when it's popular to go to church and be the church and be a Christian and, and everybody else is, is you know, the, the strangers are the ones who don't go to church on Sundays. Well, Christendom is no longer in effect. In fact, some have said that Christendom is dead. 
And it's no longer popular to go to church. And it's no longer popular to be a Christian. It's no longer popular. Now, with this coronavirus and, and all that is going on, there's been a revival have started across the land. People are watching YouTube videos of pastors. In fact, some of the folks I've heard from have watched five, six, seven pastors on Sunday mornings. I don't know if we're really that bored or if we're that interested in the Word of God. Could be either. But the popularity of hearing what God has to say is on the rise. And that's a good thing. Because again, when Christendom was, was fleeting at best, our churches were getting more and more empty, our pastors were getting more and more discouraged, and the people of the world were, well, falling away. And so how do we capture this popularity? How do we become popular? Well, first of all, anything that is popular will eventually fall out of popularity. We are a fickle people. We don't hold our interest in any one thing for very long. Think of all the TV shows that you have enjoyed over the years. Every single one of them has come to an end at some point or another. Except maybe The Simpsons. I think they're still going on for years and years and years. But I digress. All the shows, they come to their end. They, quote, jump the shark. Or they leave TV forever. Some with a good closure and some without. Some they're going to start the next season and then don't. But everything that was popular comes to an end. And so how, how do we give up the popularity? Well, first of all, we need to not go through the paces of trying to find what is kitschy or what is, is popular in the time or, or go with the flow of the world so many people right now are after the song and, and you know the sound and light show, the, the fog machines or the, the snazzy this and that and the other during worship. And we really need to focus on just the word of God. What is the word of God? What should we do? What could we do? What are we called to do? We need to keep the mission, the mission of the church. And in the United Methodist Church, the mission of our church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. To making disciples means that, that we as Christians, we as disciples, we study the word, we read our, our scriptures, we sing our praise songs, we attend worship, we feed the hungry, we clothe the naked, we visit the imprisoned. We do all the things that Jesus has told us to do. And we do it without need of recognition. We do it without need of praise and pomp and circumstance. You know, God calls us to put our faith in God's understanding of love and grace. <laughs> you know, that is something that will never go away. That is something that will sustain us through the times when others have abandoned the faith. Yeah, I know there's other churches in town that do things bigger and brighter and better and all the things that go along with it. But you know, we're called to be faithful. We're called to be the hands and feet to Jesus Christ's service. We are called to be disciples. Sometimes it's really popular to be a disciple, and other times it's not. We need to keep about the work that we are doing. Caleb and Lauren printed off some palm fronds and colored them so that we would have palm fronds. And Caleb walked around the house to, to celebrate the, the um, palm parade, if you will, because we weren't going to be able to do it at, at church. Think about that. What have we lost during this time of, of quarantine? What have we lost during this time of, of staying at home? But also, what have we gained? It may not be popular to, to be at home and be apart from each other, but we've gained time to be at peace, to study, to, to pick up some hobbies that maybe we've left behind because we were too busy to do them. Maybe, just maybe, this was a time of rest and Sabbath from the busy, busy world. 
We need to continue being God's children, being God's people. Pray for those that are on the front lines and in the essential jobs. Pray for those that are absolutely going stir crazy in their homes. Pray for the folks that need just a little bit of help throughout this time. And then, however we can, keeping our distance and keeping our, our quarantine in place, figure out a way to help those that are in need. Yeah, it's probably not the most popular thing to do, but you know what? We've given up popularity for Lent anyway. May God always bless us. I'd like to now, as I have been doing over the past couple of weeks, read the words to a favorite hymn, especially here in the springtime. It is hymn number 707, Hymn of Promise. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree. In cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity. In our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity in our death a resurrection at the last a victory unrevealed until its season something god alone can see may we be truly blessed this holy week may we experience easter in our own homes in our own way and when we finally do get to come back together let us celebrate as a church as followers of christ as people of the true living God. Let me end with this closing prayer. Almighty God, on this day, your son Jesus the Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem and was proclaimed king by those who spread their garments and palm branches along his way. Let those branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our Lord. And follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen. May you be blessed and a blessing to each and every person you meet. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, I ask blessings to be upon us all. God speed, my friends, and be well.